1995, a man named Babani Sissoko entered the bank in Dubai and walked into the head office, then asked for a loan to buy a car. The manager agreed with no problem, and Sissoko after it invited him for a dinner at his house with the intention of performing one of the trickiest heists in the world. Many people at first thought that this story is too good to be true when it was first revealed. A man from a small Malayan village who could not speak English or write it could perform one of the greatest scams in the late 1990s. He was accused of using black magic. He got the Dubai Islamic Bank to transfer to him more than 200 million dollars. And still to our day, the rich man has never spent a day in jail for it. He is still protected by the fact that Mali has no extradition treaty with any other country. And in 2018, it was reported that the Dubai Islamic Bank was still on the run pursuing him through the courts over the financial crisis that he caused them. Before we start, make sure to subscribe and hit that bell to turn on notifications. It all began in August 1995, when Futanga Babani Sissoko, a man who was born in a small village called Dabia, not far from the Mali's capital Bamako. The man approached the head office of the bank as a businessman looking for a loan to buy a car. After getting the loan and inviting the manager at the time, Mohamed Ayoub, for the dinner at Sissoko's house, he revealed to the bank manager that he actually had magical powers and abilities and that he could use it to double any sum of money. And somehow, he managed to convince the manager to come to his home again, but this time, he asked him to bring some cash when doing so. Ayub blindly believed in magic. He believed in the mysterious businessman who came to the UAE from a remote village in Mali. When the manager visited Sissoko for the second time, he saw a man getting out of a room, saying that he was attacked by a spirit. And Sissoko warned Ayub to not anger the spirits, or otherwise, his money will not be doubled. So Ayub left his money in that room and waited. He saw lights and smoke coming out, he claimed that he heard voices of spirits, then there was silence. And by the end, the money was indeed doubled, and Ayub was left in shock and happiness. He had found a way to double the money. As a manager of a bank with millions of dollars at his behest, he could make millions in profits. And from there on, the highest could begin. Over the next three years, Ayub sent money to over 180 of Sissoko's accounts in different countries around the world, expecting his money to come back in double amounts. By the year 1998, the news began to spread that the bank was going through some difficulties and had a cash flow crisis. Soon people started gathering at the doors of the bank, waiting for it to open, because they were afraid to lose their money. But the bank denied it, they called it a little difficulty that did not lead to any financial losses, either in the bank's investments or depositors' accounts. But that was not the case, and the people who owned the bank took a huge hit. The losses were not covered by insurance, and the bank almost went into bankruptcy if it was not for the intervention and assistance of the government that stepped in to save the bank. One of the advantages of the scheme is that Sissoko didn't have to stay in Dubai to keep receiving money from the bank. In November 1995, just few weeks after Sissoko's dinner with Ayub, he visited one of New York Bank's office. And there, he did more than just open an account or get a loan. He met a female operationist and married her. And from there on, more than 100 million dollar was transferred there. He paid his new wife more than a half million dollar for her help in making the transfers easier. Later on, Dubai Islamic banks addressed in courts claiming that 151 million dollar was transferred to the Citibank account from the correspondent account in the Bank of Dubai and it was done without the necessary permission. Thanks to the money coming from Dubai Bank, Sissoko was able to realize one of his dreams, which is to have his own airline in West Africa. He bought a used Hawker Siddeley 125 business jet and several older Boeing 727S. 
This was the beginning of a short history of Air Dabia, named after the Malian village where Sissoko was born. Everything was going according to the plan, until Sissoko made a huge mistake when he tried to purchase two American military helicopters. He explained the purchase by the fact that he wanted to use the two helicopters as ambulance to deliver the victims to hospital. But those helicopters were bigger than to be used as an ambulance to transport the wounded, since these helicopters could be converted to military use. A special permit was needed to purchase them, which Sissoko did not have, and so his people tried to solve the problem by trying to give a bribe of $30,000 to a custom officer. Then they were arrested and the Interpol issued a warrant for the arrest of Sissoko. He was detained in Geneva where he was just about to open another bank account to receive transfers from the UAE. After he was extradited to the US, things took a different and amusing turn. As his bail hearing, the judge and members of prosecution were shocked by the number of American diplomats and lawyers who were willing to vouch for him, including a former US senator. And against the wishes of the US government, Sissoko was bailed for $20 million, a Florida record at the time. Then to show appreciation and generosity, he bought Mercedes-Benz and Jaguar cars for all the members of his defense team and gave large amounts of money to charities in Miami. Sissoko became a Miami celebrity. One of the visits to a jewelry store, Sissoko is said to have spent over a half million dollars. When one high school band needed money to travel to New York for a Thanksgiving day parade, he gave them more than $400,000. He already had several wives, but that didn't stop him from marrying more and housing them in some of the 23 apartments he rented in the city. Soon enough, the Miami media noticed. In a story by the Miami Herald, he is estimated to have given away over $14 million. When Sissoko's case eventually came to court, he pleaded guilty and received 40 days in prison but served only half of it and a $250,000 fine that was actually paid by the Dubai Islamic Bank. Sissoko was eventually given early release in return for a million dollar payment to a homeless shelter, being sent back to Mali to serve the rest of his sentence under house arrest. But when he arrived to Mali, he was welcomed back as a hero. <laughs> Meanwhile in Dubai, the bank's auditors began to notice that something was not right. Ayub was getting nervous with time and Sissoko had stopped answering his calls, which even worried him more. Finally, he confessed to a colleague how much was missing. Too ashamed to say, Ayub wrote it on a paper, 890 million dirhams, the equivalent of 242 million dollars. He was found guilty of fraud and was sentenced to three years in jail. Sissoko has never faced justice. In his absence, a Dubai court sentenced him to three years for fraud and practicing magic. Interpol issued an arrest warrant and he remains a wanted man. For 12 years, between 2002 and 2014, Sissoko was a member of parliament in Mali, which gave him immunity from prosecution. And after he was no longer an MP, he was been protected by the fact that Mali has no extradition treaty with any other country. Sissoko gained a large reputation in Mali. He was known as a fabulously rich and generous man, usually offering help and presents to people who work for him. A BBC reporter went all the way to Mali in order to meet him and have a talk with him. And after a long drive and hours of tracking, she found the house that fitted the descriptions that she was given. Surrounded by armed guards, there was Babani Sissoko in person. He agreed to have an interview. He began by telling her about his entry to the world saying, my name is Sissoko Futanga Babani. You know, the day I was born, all the villages around here were burned down. The villagers went round shouting, Marito has had a boy. The fire leapt and leapt. There used to be a lot of bush around. The interviewer eventually asked about $242 million. He replied saying that it was a crazy story, denying any relation that he have with that case and insisting that he made the Dubai bank manager only once. And it was in his office 
when he wanted to ask for a loan to buy that car. The story of Sissoko remains a puzzling story. Defying Interpol, Sissoko has spent a remarkable 20 years on the run, even if he has squandered all of his money and can never leave Mali. He has never spent a day in jail for the Black Magic Bank highest. Subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss more videos of crime and mysteries and much more interesting stories. I see you in the next video. Take care.